The Royal Collection of the British Royal Family is the largest private art collection in the world. It is made up of over 1 million objects, including 7,000 paintings, over 150,000 works on paper, this including 30,000 watercolors and drawings, and about 450,000 photographs, as well as tapestries, furniture, ceramics, textiles, carriages, weapons, armor, jewelry, clocks, musical instruments, tableware, plants, manuscripts, books, and sculptures. Throughout the reign of Elizabeth, the second 1950 to 2022, there were significant additions to the collection through judicious purchases, bequests, and gifts from nation states and official bodies. Since 1952, approximately 2,500 works have been added to the royal collection. The Commonwealth is strongly represented in this manner. An example is 75 contemporary Canadian watercolors that entered the collection between 1985 and 2001 as a gift from the Canadian Society of Painters in Watercolor. Modern art acquired by Elizabeth II includes pieces by Sir Anish, Kapoor, Lucian, Freud, and Andy Warhol. In 2002 it was revealed that 20 paintings were acquired by the Queen in the first 50 years of her reign, mostly portraits of previous monarchs or their close relatives. Eight were purchased at auction, six bought from dealers, three commissioned, two donated or bequeathed, and one was a purchase from Winchester Cathedral. Queen Charlotte 1781 Thomas Gainsborough The Queen's dress of gold spangled silk net over white silk, punctuated by tasseled bunches of gold lace, dominates the painting. Its intangible gauze like effect is echoed by the flowers in the Queen's powdered hair and in the foliage and the sky in the landscape beyond. Famous for capturing an exact likeness, Gainsborough gives the Queen's unremarkable, features latent gaiety and animation as she moves into the light, her dog in step with her. Self-portrait in a flight cap 1642 Rembrandt Rembrandt contributions to art came in a period of great wealth and cultural achievement that historians call the Dutch Golden Age. When Dutch art was antithetical to the Baroque style that dominated Europe was prolific and innovative. After he achieved useful success as a portrait painter, Rembrandt's later years were marked by personal tragedy and financial hardships. Yet his etchings and paintings were popular throughout his lifetime. His reputation as an artist remained high. Charles the first in three positions, 1635 to 1636. Anthony Van Dyck. Charles the first commissioned this portrait for the sculptor Gian Lorenzo Bernini in Rome, who was to create a marble bust of the king. The three views of Charles show the fashion at the time for men to wear their hair longer on the left. The shipbuilder and his wife in 1633. Rembrandt. Rembrandt's famous double portrait depicts master shipbuilder Jan Rickson, who was a shareholder in the Dutch East India Company, and his wife Breed Jans. He created this work during the height of his success as a portrait painter. Charles I with M. de Saint Antoine in 1633. Anthony Van Dyck. Charles I with M. de Saint Antoine is an oil painting on canvas by the Flemish painter Anthony Van Dyck, depicting Charles I on horseback, accompanied by his riding master, Pierre Antoine, Bourdin, Schneider de Saint Antoine. Charles I became King of England 
Scotland and Ireland in 1625 on the death of his father James I, and when that became Charles's principal painter in ordinary in 1632. This portrait is dated 1633 and was the first equestrian portrait of Charles, the first painted by Van Dyck. Joseph and Potiphar's wife 1630-1632 Orazio Gentileschi Joseph and Potiphar's wife is a painting by Orazio Gentileschi, painted around 1630-1632 during his time in Charles's court. Along with the finding of Moses and an Apollo and the Muses, it was created for Queen Henrietta to hang in the Queen's house in Greenwich. Gentileschi received his last payment for the work from the royal family in July 1632, and a frame was made ready for it at Greenwich between 1633 and 1634. It remains in the royal collection. The theme relates to the story told in Book of Genesis chapter 39 of Joseph in Potiphar's house. Self-Portrait in 1623 Sir Peter Paul Rubens Self-Portrait is a 1623 self-portrait in oils on canvas by Peter Paul Rubens. Signed and dated by the artist. He produced it to send to Charles Prince of Wales, the future Charles I, and it is still in the royal collection. The Calling of Saints Peter and Andrew, 1602-1604 Michelangelo Maricita Caravaggio The work was purchased by Charles I, an avid art collector, in 1637. Sold during the Commonwealth, it was reacquired by Charles II after the Restoration. It has since remained in the royal collection and in 2022 was on display in Hampton Court Palace near London. It was long believed to be a relatively valueless copy of a lost original, but after six years of restoration and examination the royal collection declared on 10 November 2006 that this was, in fact, an authentic Caravaggio. The verdict has been corroborated by external experts and the painting is now probably worth more than 50 million. But works from the royal collection are now sold as the collection is held in trust for the nation. Massacre of the Innocents 1565-1567 Peter Brugge the Elder Several oil on oak panel versions of the Massacre of the Innocents were painted by 16th century Netherlandish painters Peter Brugge the Elder and his son Peter Brugge the Younger. The work translates the biblical account of the massacre of the innocents into a winter scene in the Netherlands. In the prelude to the Dutch revolt against Spanish rule, also known as the Eighty Years' War, what is now thought to be the only version by Brugge, the Elder is in the British Royal Collection for some time held at Hampton, Court Palace. By 2017, it was at Windsor Castle. Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II ordered it overpainted to hide images of dead and dying children. Madonna and the Child in a Landscape with Tobias and the Angel 1535-1540 Titian this painting was described by Ridolfi when he saw it in the Rust collection as one of Titian's exceptional works. The Virgin and the Christ Child sit on the bank of a stream set in a landscape in the Dolomites. The Virgin picks a campanula, while Christ selects a rose, symbol of his passion. It is one of a group of four closely related compositions by Titian and his workshop representing the Virgin and the Child in a landscape. Portrait of Sir Henry Guildford in 1527 Hans Holbein the Younger Hans Holbein the Younger was born in Augsburg, where he was trained by his father, Hans Holbein the Elder. 
He became a member of the Painters Guild at Basel in 1519. He visited France in 1524 and first visited London in 1526-8. He returned to England in 1532 and shortly afterwards was employed by Henry VIII for whom he painted numerous portraits of the king, the royal family, and members of the court. Holbein remained in royal service until his death in 1543. Apollo and Diana in 1526. Lucas Cranach the Elder. Lucas Cranach the Elder was one of the most important German painters, graphic designers, and printers of the Renaissance. In addition to numerous altarpieces and allegorical paintings, he and his workshop also produced a large number of portraits of his employers as well as the reformers Martin Luther and Philip Melanchthon. St. Paul preaching in Athens, in 1516. Raphael Raphael has created a classical scene by integrating into the composition motifs from Roman reliefs and ancient figures, buildings, and statues. After Paul had encountered conflict as a result of his preaching in Salonica, he was taken to Athens as a place of safety. While he was waiting for his companions to arrive, Paul was distressed to see Athens full of idols. So Paul went to the synagogue and the Agora on several occasions to preach about the resurrection of Jesus. In the 20th century, Pope John Paul II likened the modern media to the new Oropagus, where Christian ideas needed to be explained and defended anew against disbelief and the idols of gold and silver. Studies of the 40s in the womb in 1511. Leonardo da Vinci Studies of the fetus in the womb are two colored annotated sketches by Leonardo da Vinci made in around 1511. The studies correctly depict the human fetus in its proper position inside a dissected uterus. Leonardo depicted the uterus with one chamber, in contrast to theories that the uterus had multiple chambers, which many believed divided fetuses into separate compartments in the case of twins. Leonardo studied human embryology with the help of anatomist Marcantonio della Torre and saw the fetus within a cadaver. The first study, measuring 30.5 to 2 cm, shows the fetus in a bridge position inside a dissected uterus. The studies were initially bequeathed to Francesco Melzi in C158-90. They were bought from his heirs by Pompeo, Leone, and by 1630. They belonged to Thomas, Howard, 2nd Earl of Arundel. Since 1690, the studies have been housed in the Royal Collection, United Kingdom.